Today we're talking about the classic Brussels sprout. People can mess it up very easily. It's something that was one of our biggest sellers at the business I used to run. So I'm very familiar with these guys. I know how to make them delicious. I've shown you how to make Brussels sprouts before in a video that I particularly think was terrible. So I'm probably gonna just kind of reintroduce the recipes that I made in that video. I didn't know what I was doing at that time. I wanna do these guys justice. We made a, a roasted Brussels sprout in that video as well as a fried Brussels sprout. And today I'm kind of gonna combine the two. I'm gonna make roasted Brussels sprouts in the oven just because they're gonna be easier. Frying Brussels sprouts for a crowd is not the easiest or most pleasant thing to do, especially last minute. Roast them in the oven, get them crispy though. That's the key. We're not gonna blanch them, we're not gonna cut them whole, we're gonna quarter them, get them in a sheet tray, plenty of olive oil, and brown them on all sides. When we take them out, we're gonna season them like we did the fried Brussels sprouts, which was our side item on the food truck, and one of the most popular items on the truck. I knew we were onto something when I would have moms come by with screaming kids telling me that the only way they would shut their kids up are with our Brussels sprouts. So for me, that was a huge win. And so today we're gonna go over how to roast these guys and then dress them up in sort of a holiday way, give them a little color and uh, make them look nice for the holidays. So let's just jump right into it. First thing we wanna do is cut these guys. And as you'll see, you can get a variance in size when you buy Brussels sprouts. Usually the strategy is most of them are in this category of size that I can see. So I want to quarter these guys and then these smaller ones, I think I only need to have them. So just use your judgment. I mean, you can clearly see it's like this is half the size. So I don't need to cut this one as much as I need to cut this one. But by quartering this one and having this one, it'll have them all kind of cook at the same speed. If you see a little nub that's like rough, then you can just kind of clean it off. Otherwise, you don't need to worry too much about the root end. If you see one with bad leaves, you can just peel it back. We got our Brussels sprouts cut. They're nice, these are gonna have, they have three sides that we can brown. So when we're got them in the sheet tray, we can flip them every now and then, make sure everything's got nice color. Again, I got my large Nordic wear sheet tray. This guy's gonna be enough space probably for all of these, I hope. So this is about two pounds of cut Brussels sprouts, fits on one sheet tray. I think I'm happy with uh, the amount that that fits on there. Just kind of get any pieces that I see that might burn. And then we want to get these seasoned and oiled up. We want to get plenty of olive oil on these. We almost want them to fry. If you're not going to use enough oil, you're not going to get the color that you want. So be generous. You don't want them swimming in oil, obviously, because it's dangerous, but like you want them generously coated. You want the bottom of the sheet tray nicely coated. and and that's gonna get enough heat on these guys to give them color. See how they're glistening? You can already tell there's plenty of oil. It's not too much, just enough to get these nice and brown. Now this is part of the love aspect. I'm gonna make sure that there's a flat surface facing down on every Brussels sprout. Making sure that the bigger pieces are towards the edges of the sheet tray and the smaller are towards the middle. Now these are going into a 450 degree oven. I could even go up to a 500 degree oven if I wanted to, but like you have to really watch it if you cook it at that high. It's gonna create a, a nice crust, but you have to be very careful. So 450 degrees is good, but kind of hang around every 10, 15 minutes or so, just give it a check. If your oven isn't that great, you can throw it on the bottom rack and that's gonna help kind of crisp up the bottom a little bit stronger. But other than that, we're just gonna get it in there. It's probably gonna take about 40, five minutes for us to get it nice and crispy. Then when it gets out, I'm just gonna put a pinch of salt, a couple pinches, and then white pepper, just about a tablespoon of that. And then this is gonna be our little seasoning that we're gonna sprinkle on top. 
the white pepper, I don't know why we used it, but it really does something. It adds a different sort of flavor to the Brussels sprouts that's a little unique. Now, one of the things we were known for on our food truck was the fact that we had a hot sauce bar that we were very proud of. That was free for anybody to use. People could take as much or as little as they wanted. They could donate hot sauces to it. And it was sort of like a fun thing that people stopped and kind of checked out what we had. And on the Brussels sprouts, they were particularly good with hot sauce. One of our favorites was sriracha. Now, I don't have sriracha, but I thought that using the Fresno chilies would be sort of a similar aspect. It's not, it doesn't have that sort of vinegar acidity that we're looking for but it sort of adds that spice that is nice to the sweetness that we're going to add from the agave which is how we seasoned our fried brussels sprouts so i'm just going to slice these up into diagonal sort of rounds it's going to add some nice color and add some nice flavor <laughs> Now we're just gonna wait for the Brussels sprouts to finish cooking, making sure that we check in on them like a hawk, making sure that they don't burn, but that they're perfectly browned and we don't want them like bright green. We're really looking for like, uh, you know, a dark forest green, like an evergreen. Um, it's the Brussels sprouts will ch start to change their color and that's gonna tell you that you're doing the right thing. We don't want soggy leaves. Soggy Brussels sprout leaves are never good. And uh, I think that's part of the reason why people don't like Brussels sprouts. When you overcook them in a way, they give off this sulfuric sort of odor that is unpleasant and the texture is unpleasant. But if you can cook them at a high heat fast and hard and firm them up and crisp them up, they're like like nutty and delicious. And then we're gonna season them with some sweet agave, that peppery white pepper and a little bit of salt, and then some of the spicy pepper, and you got the sweet, spicy, salty kind of thing going on with the crunchy Brussels sprouts. It's delicious, and I think you're gonna like it. So see, obviously in the center, you don't get as much, but we're, we're gonna flip them to that other side. This is where the love in cooking comes in. And you just want to get these pale guys out on the corners and some of these more well done pieces in towards the center. You can be a little rougher with them now. So as you can see, these are nice and crisp. They're great as is. There's almost a natural sweetness that comes out of them. But we're about to make them a lot better. We're gonna take our little seasoning mix of the salt and pepper. We're gonna take our chilies. And then our agave. It's a little bit in it at a time. Taste it, I need more. A little bit of everything. Keep seasoning them. You want them salty. You don't want them like over salted, but you want to taste the salt. Balanced out with the sweetness of the agave and then the spiciness of the chili. The chili is a nice addition. It's a nice substitute for hot sauce. It's more of an elegant attempt at it. You could use hot sauce. You don't have to use the chili at all. If you get them nice and roasted and crispy, if you're too scared to roast it at 450, you can roast it at 425 and just kind of roast it a little bit longer. You want a high enough temperature where these things are gonna brown nicely like this. And then you get a nice little crunch. The kids are gonna like this. It's a sweet and a savory kind of aspect. It'll balance nicely like a rich steak. But this is one of the fan favorites. We do these a number of ways and I'll probably just keep showing you different ways that we like to make them. But I'm happy with these. Next time, we're making pecan pie. 
Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked Scrooge McDuck shirt. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite Christmas movie is. Mine is Christmas Carol. I like all of the versions. There's actually a really amazing version that is on Amazon Prime. It's called The Man Who Invented Christmas. It's about Charles Dickens while he was writing A Christmas Carol. The story's incredible. You should go check it out. The sale on my merch store is still going on. 20% off everything in the store with the promo code I can cook. Uh, so click the links below, check them out. There should be a link right over here as well. The next time we're making pecan pie, one of my mom's specialties. That's all I got. I'll see you next time. Take care and go feed yourself.